Welcome to the concept file on absolute value equations. We hope that you have a great learning session with us. This concept deals with absolute value equations. You must be well versed with the content in this session before you begin absolute value inequalities. We will start with introducing you to the concept of absolute value. You will learn how to represent absolute value equations on the number line. Learning this skill is crucial to solving absolute value questions with confidence. So we will help you build it by solving three practice questions and emphasizing the conclusions you can draw from these questions. Then we will move to the reverse logic problems in which you are given the number line representation and you are asked to find the absolute value expression for it. In the end we will discuss a few special types of absolute value questions that you may get. So let's get started. Now you must have come across expressions such as these in GMAT questions or elsewhere. These are absolute value expressions. You read this expression as absolute value of x. Absolute value is a concept that most students deem to be difficult. But it is not difficult at all once you get a good understanding of the fundamentals. The key to building confidence about the concept of absolute value is being able to represent the absolute value of x on the number line. And we will soon see how to do that. Let's mark the points 3 and minus 3 on the number line. Now what is the distance of 3 from 0? It is 3 units. What is the distance of minus 3 from 0? This distance is also 3 units. Please note that we don't say that the distance of minus 3 from 0 is minus 3. Some students do make that mistake. Now the numbers 3 and minus 3 may be located in opposite directions, but they are both located at the same distance from 0. In many cases, this sameness of magnitude is all we care about. Think of a real life scenario in which zero on the number line represents your home. Your workplace is three miles away from your home and your parents home is also three miles away from your home, but in the opposite direction to your workplace. So this is how you will represent this information on the number line. Now think, whether you go to your parents home or to your workplace from your home, your car will burn the same amount of fuel and you will take the same amount of time if your speed is the same in both the cases. The fact that you are moving in opposite directions in the two cases is totally irrelevant to your calculations, isn't it? The amount of fuel burnt depends only on the magnitude of the distance you travel, not on the direction in which you travel. This example illustrates that in many real life scenarios we are concerned only with the magnitude of a quantity and not with the sign of that quantity. Now you probably know this intuitively, but still we like to mention that. On the number line, the magnitude of a number is equal to the distance of that number from zero. We represent the idea that magnitude of three is equal to the magnitude of minus three as follows. This expression is read as the absolute value of three is equal to the absolute value of minus three is equal to three units. In general, the absolute value of x means the numbers whose magnitude is x units. And because the magnitude of a number is always positive, the absolute value of x is always positive. Now we saw that the absolute value of x means the numbers whose magnitude is x units. But we also saw that on the number line, the magnitude of a number is equal to the distance of that number from zero. Therefore, we can say that the absolute value of x represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of x units from zero. Now how many such numbers will be there? Two. One at a distance of x units on the right hand side of zero and the other at the distance of x units on the left hand side of zero. This is the key to master the concept of absolute value. Once you develop the ability to visualize what an absolute value expression means on the number line, you will be able to solve any absolute value question. Now let's practice this concept a little bit more. We need to represent the following expressions on the number line. Now what does absolute value of x represent? Say with us. Absolute value of x represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of x units from zero. So what does the question absolute value of x is equal to five mean? This question is asking us to find those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of 5 units from 0. This is easy, isn't it? Let's take a look at the number line. Which numbers are at a distance of 5 units from 0? 
5 and minus 5. So that's our answer. Absolute value of x is equal to 5 has two solutions, 5 and minus 5. So we have solved the first absolute value question. Great. Now we have to represent the following expressions on the number line. Absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 2. Hmm. We seem to have a bit of a problem here, don't we? How do we interpret absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 2? We know by now that absolute value of x minus 1 represents all those numbers for which x minus 1 is at a distance of 2 units from 0. But it is hard to visualize this statement, isn't it? So let's do the easy thing. Let's put x minus 1 is equal to y, where y as well is a variable. So that the given question reads, absolute value of y is equal to 2. Now this is a question that we can confidently solve, right? We know that absolute value of y represents all those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of y units from 0. So absolute value of y is equal to 2 represents all those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of 2 units from 0. So what these numbers are? 2 and minus 2. So y can have two values. It can either be 2 or minus 2. But we know that y is equal to x minus 1 which implies that x minus 1 is equal to 2 or x minus 1 is equal to minus 2. From here we get that either x is equal to 3 or x is equal to minus 1. So there, we have found the values of x that satisfy the equation absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 2. Let us now plot these two numbers on the number line so that we learn how to visualize expressions such as these. As we can see, the expression absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 2 represent those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of 2 units from 1. Let us now move to the third and final question of this section. Represent the following expressions on the number line. Absolute value of x plus 1 is equal to 4. Again, this expression seems difficult to visualize on the number line. So let's first convert it into an expression that is easy to visualize. We put x plus 1 is equal to the variable y. So the given equation turns into absolute value of y is equal to 4. We know very well by now that this expression represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of 4 units from 0. What are these numbers? 4 and minus 4. So the two values of y that satisfy this expression are y is equal to 4 and y is equal to minus 4. But we know that y is equal to x plus 1, which implies that x plus 1 is equal to 4 or x plus 1 is equal to minus 4. From here we get that x is equal to 3 or x is equal to minus 5. So there we have our solution. The expression absolute value of x plus 1 is equal to 4 holds for two values of x, 3 and minus 5. Again, let's plot these numbers on the number line so that we can get a sense of how to visualize an expression such as this the next time we get it. We see that the expression absolute value of x plus 1 is equal to 4 represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of 4 units from minus 1. In order to form up our understanding of the visual representation of absolute value expression, let's just do a recap of the number line representations of the three equations we just solved. Absolute value of x is equal to 5 represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of 5 units from 0. Absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 2 represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of 2 units from 1. Absolute value of x plus 1 is equal to 4 represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of 4 units from minus 1. Now absolute value of x is equal to 5 can also be written as absolute value of x minus 0 is equal to 5. Now by looking at all these expressions and their number line representations, can you deduce how to visualize an expression such as absolute value of x minus a is equal to b? Well, you can now say that absolute value of x minus a is equal to b represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of b units from a. Now this a can have any value, positive, negative or zero. For example, in the case of mod x is equal to 5, a is equal to zero. In the case of mod x minus 1 is equal to 2, a is equal to 1. And in the case of mod x plus 1 is equal to 4, a is equal to minus 1. Another interesting fact that you may have observed is that the number line representation of mod x minus a is equal to b is symmetrical about a. 
again. This is a very important fact and will be used repeatedly in our further discussions. Once you understand this concept well, questions on absolute value and absolute value inequalities will be a cakewalk for you. You'll see that soon for yourself. So if you want, spend some extra time on these questions and grasp them fully. Till now we have seen how to represent a given absolute value equation on the number line. Let us now test our understanding of this process by trying to solve questions the other way around. That is, if we are given a number line representation, can we write the absolute value equation for it? If we can, that means we have truly mastered this concept. So let's try it out. So in this question, you have to find the expression mod x minus a is equal to b for which the solution set is minus 4 and 2. Now how do you do this? Well, we remember that the number line representation of mod x minus a is equal to b is symmetrical about a. So we have an idea of how to solve this question, don't we? We simply need to find the point around which this solution set is symmetrical and that will be the value of a. And once we know a, we can simply measure the distance between a and one of the two solutions, and that will be b. So let's get going. How do we find the point around which minus 4 and 2 are symmetrical? Well, such a point is known as the midpoint. So we simply need to find out the midpoint of minus 4 and 2, and that is minus 1. So a is equal to minus 1. And what is the distance of minus 1 from minus 4? It is 3 units. So the given number line represents those numbers that are at a distance of 3 units from minus 1. Therefore, it represents the expression mod x minus minus 1 is equal to 3. That is, mod x plus 1 is equal to 3. Now this was quite an easy question, wasn't it? Well, we had told you already, once you master the idea that mod x minus a is equal to b, represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of b units from a, all absolute value questions will be a cakewalk for you. Now before we move on to the next question, let us revise the approach we followed for this one. Step 1. Plot the midpoint of the solutions on the number line. This midpoint is equal to a. Step 2. Find the distance of either solution from the midpoint. This distance is equal to b. Step 3. Write the expression mod x minus a is equal to b. Let's now try another question. In this question as well, we need to write down the algebraic expression for the given number line representation. And again, we will follow the three-step approach of reverse logic questions to solve this question. Step 1 is to find the midpoint of the two solutions. The solutions here are 2 and 7. The midpoint of 2 and 7 is 4.5. So a is equal to 4.5. Let's also plot it on the number line for our easy reference. Step 2 is to find the distance of either solution from the midpoint. The distance between the midpoint 4.5 and 2 is 2.5 units. So b is equal to 2.5. Step 3 is to write the expression mod x minus a is equal to b. So we write mod x minus 4.5 is equal to 2.5. And there we have our answer. But if you want, you can simplify it as well and eliminate the decimal points. To do so, we multiply both sides of the equation with 2. And we get mod 2x minus 9 is equal to 5. So this is our answer in a more elegant looking form. It is good that in our last question, we got an expression in which the coefficient of x was something other than 1. This gives us a chance to discuss something very important. If let's say you were given the expression mod 2x minus 9 is equal to 5 and you were asked to find the values of x that satisfy this expression, how would you do so? Your first step would be to divide both sides of the expression by 2 in order to make the coefficient of x 1. So you would get mod x minus 4.5 is equal to 2.5. This is an expression that you can easily solve because you know that it represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of 2.5 units from 4.5. So the key to solving an expression of the form mod px minus a is equal to b where p is a positive number, 
is to first divide both sides of the equation with P. Now a natural curiosity might arise in your mind at this point. Suppose you are given an expression such as mod minus x minus a is equal to b. Now should you divide both sides of the equation with minus 1 here so that the coefficient of x becomes positive? Hmm, think about it. Minus x minus 1 is equal to minus x plus 1. So mod of minus x minus 1 is equal to mod of minus x plus 1. The first thing that we learned in the concept of absolute value was that absolute value represents the magnitude of the quantity. Mod 3 is equal to mod of minus 3. So mod of minus x plus 1 will be equal to the mod of x plus 1. Therefore, if you are given the expression mod minus x minus a is equal to b, you do not need to multiply both sides of the equation with minus 1. You can simply write mod minus x minus a is equal to mod of x plus a. Therefore, the given expression is equivalent to mod of x plus a is equal to b. Now, a natural corollary of the previous two special cases is that if you are given an expression such as mod of minus px minus a is equal to b, where p is a positive number, you will divide both sides of the equation with p and not with minus p. Dividing both sides of the equation with p, you will get mod of minus x minus a by p is equal to b by p. By taking the minus sign out in the common in the expression mod of minus x minus a by p, you will get mod of minus x plus a by p. Now you will write the property that mod of minus x is equal to mod of x. So mod of minus x plus a by p is equal to mod of x plus a by p. Therefore, the given expression is equivalent to mod of x plus a by p is equal to b by p. And you know well that this expression represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of b by p units from minus a by p. With this, we have completed the concept on absolute value equations. In this session, we have learned that mod x minus a is equal to b represents those numbers on the number line that are at a distance of b units from a. The number line representation of mod x minus a is equal to b is symmetrical about a. And we can solve reverse logic questions using this three-step process. Good luck.